Hello everybody, this is Miss T from the Children's Room of the Plainfield Public Library. Now today's story is Plymouth Rocks. The writer is Jane Yoli. Today we have two special listeners. First we have the main character, Rock. Hello. And we have his co-star, Fat Checker. Hi. Okay, so I hope you enjoy Plymouth Rocks, written by Jane Yoli. Okay. Rock speaks. You know that I'm old and rather well known, but everything told is not set in stone. Two kinds of history, not all of it's true and not all of it is false. Now it's up to you. Research and study discuss and choose. Some call it fiction, some call it news. Stone has a long memory, but memory does not always speak true. So I will check the facts. If rock statements are misstatements, alternative facts, fabulations, or just plain lies, my red pen will let you know. Rock and roll. I was not born where I was found. In fact, I wandered all around. Erratic, I am sometimes called. A glacial friend just let me fall. Left me there and moved away. I haven't seen it since that day. I really hope that it's okay. A glacier, erratic rock, is one that was moved by a glacier. Plymouth Rock is a grandiorite. Can we say that together? Grandiorite, a rock similar to granite. More than 600 million years ago, rock was part of a larger grandiorite that was carried away by a glacier. When the glacier melted, rock dropped off and was left behind. Rock bottom. A few years ago, eons, they say, woolly mammoth came my way, rubbing their tails on my backside. Oh my, those creatures sure were wide. A couple of mammoth teeth had actually been unearthed in Cape May. So maybe one or two wandered that, that far. Or maybe their fossilized bones just got dropped off by of some kind of erratic rock. We just don't know yet. Rock band. For a long while, just creature comforts, deer and elk galore, an occasional sake for shiver's sake. Though after a while too, it proved a bore. A stone's life has but few adventures, a rock, a roll, and little more. My goodness, rock left a lot out. In addition to the creatures rock mentions, there were also wandering raccoons, wolves, turkeys, rabbits, porcupines, shorebirds, and the occasional bear looking for mate. Rock solid. Native people fish nearby me. Their children sometimes tried to climb me. Their fires kept me warm and toasty, cooking dinners that were roasty. But at last, I do not eat, and so I've never tasted meat. I am a rocketarian. Rock is correct on that one. The indigenous people of the eastern woodlands have inhabited the area for more than 12,000 years, thousands of years before the pilgrims arrived. Back then, there were many tribes, including Wapanaw, Pusatuxet, Mohegan, Pequot, Narragansett, Nauset, and others lived in the area. Some of them live there to this very day. Or rocking the boat. New men and women passing by, 
on occasion caught my eye. Their color, clothes, and tongue seemed strange. Even a rock can note the change. Different people, same old ground. An old, new, an old world lost, a new world found. The settlers considered the Americas to be a clean slate, a new world in which they could create new future for themselves. The newcomers thought of Europe as the old world and brought over aspects of their cultures, histories, and religions. The native people, however, had lived in the Americas for thousands of years and did not consider their world new. The settlers also brought violence and disease which dramatically reduced the Native American population. Much of this started well before the Mayflower ever set sail. Stepping Stone. A boat sailed in, the pilgrims landed, is how I rock came to be branded. The disembarkers stepped on me, first footfalls toward their liberty. I always keep this thought in mind. What a big step for humankind. Rock, salt, and pepper. Who welcomed them? I was the first. Then came the tribes with a great burst of friendship, food, community. They gave these gifts to the loved ones from, to the ones from the sea. But everything began with me. Hold on a minute. To be clear, Rock did not welcome any pilgrims. That legend was invented 121 years after the landing when a church elder named Thomas Fonts shared a story he allegedly heard as a child. The story of the pilgrims' first Thanksgiving with the Wampanoag people is legend too. Native people did greet the colonists and later shared food with them, but that is not the whole story. More and more colonists soon arrived and took native land to build their houses. They treated the native pe people brutally and dishonestly. Thanksgiving with colonists is now considered offensive by many. On the rocks, when colonists thought of breaking from their motherland, I was taken up quite roughly by a local band. Then I was severed, cut right in two. Some called it a sign of what the colonists would do. In 1774, when the colonists were thinking about cutting ties with England, a small group decided to move rock to the town's meeting place. rock on. Another century, another move. I didn't know what they meant to prove. My fame secure, I broke in two, dropped by a careless, traitorous crew. <sighs> Poor rock has the right facts, but the wrong reasons. No treason was involved at all. On July 4th, 1834, rock was moved again, this time to the front lawn of the newly built Pilgrim Hall Museum. Either during this move or later on, the rock broke again. Regardless of when it happened, the movers should have been more careful. Leave no stone unturned. You think a, nation, you think a national monument would live in afterlife content. Surrounded by a strong defense, I waited for life to truly commence. But with hammer, chisel, pick, and peck, my life became a rocky wreck. Rock is right about souvenir hunters. Because of those falls and chips off the old block, rock became awfully stunted. Today, rock is one-third to one-half its original weight and measures approximately 45 feet long, 2.5 feet wide, and 2 feet tall. Rock's pieces are revered for the legend rather than the true history of the Mayflower and Plymouth Rock. 
But sometimes a made up story is so strong, it becomes more memorable than the truth. Set in stone, our country wrought in stone and fire, itself a monument to admire. Suddenly torn itself in two, but Iraq knew what to do. I sent a signal of reunification, and so we rebuilt our war and tore nation. The pilgrims and those who came after them built homes and monuments of stone, securing territories with guns and cannon fire. When the nation was being torn apart in the 1860s by a terrible civil war, it seems as though the country would have to reinvent itself. Rock was a symbol of freedom, and some mentioned it when discussing slavery and civil war. But did the rock have anything directly to do with the war or unification afterwards? No. But this much is true. Rock remained an important historic symbol. In 1880, when the country was still picking up its pieces, Rock's top was reunified, was reunited with its base. The Pilgrim's arrival date, 1620, was carved onto Rock's surface. Rock Steady, 1920, a big anniversary, another big chance, another housing to rearrange. Now placed in the portico, my life once more is put on show. I am much too old for all this moving. What do they think that they're improving? In Rock's long life, its large chunks have been moved five times, 1774, 1834, 1880, and 1920, also 1921. Regardless, at the time of the 300th anniversary of the Mayflower's arrival, Rock was still a wonder of the nation. Many believe today that the legendary footfall on the stone really happened. Rock complains too much. Rock star, 400th anniversary, 2020. Here's a party for all to share with boom and blast and rockets red glare. Loud who's eyes for 100 for 400 years, clapping and stomping amid loud cheers. For me, of course, but there's something more. It's for the country that I adore. It's bigger than us, U.S. It's bigger than me. It's really about nation and liberty, the right to be and the right to stay free and also the right to disagree. Story can change the world, you see. Take it from Plymouth Rock. That's he, that's me. I've gone from glacier granite shocks to a place where Plymouth really rocks. Rock's real lesson is a history for us all, but it's not about being the stepping stone to the United States. It's this, over time we all change and adapt. We diminish and we grow. We make stories and imagine glories. We are pieces of the same whole. We're still working toward making sure everyone in the U.S. has the liberty to do those things. Our task as citizens of the world is to bring all nations together to become real partners, real compatriots, real friends. Story binds all of us together. And if a rock can understand that, then perhaps we can too. So, today's story was Plymouth Rocks, written by Jane Yolo. And thank you so much, Rock and Fact Checker, for your help. Now, until we read again, however you celebrate the day, you don't have to celebrate Thanksgiving per se, just to be thankful. Tell a loved one, thank you for being in my life. Thank you for helping me out. And until we meet again, be safe, be thankful, and take care of yourselves and each other.
Bye for now.